In this video, we are going to configure a wastewater treatment plant upgrade project. First, we provide basic information like project name and location. We select Imperial as our preferred physical unit system, meaning we will provide data in square feet and gallons. This project is located in Illinois in the United States, and we want to provide both site data and specify all the existing assets in the plant. The software uses a sophisticated algorithm for determining the optimal design for the given project. Though this algorithm can work in a completely autonomous way, users tend to prefer determining a few options manually. In the plant, we want primary clarifier stay with conventional activated sludge as the main biological treatment. For chemical phosphorus removal, let's pick ferric chloride. Let's assume the preference here is to have anaerobic digesters for sludge stabilization, and let's pick UV disinfection as the preferred disinfection mode. On the site, we have existing biological reactors and secondary clarifiers we want to keep. By providing relevant data like reactor volumes and clarifier surfaces, we allow the design generator to estimate the performance of these units incorporating them in the design. Let's identify the site location next. The fastest way to navigate the map is to enter the postal address of the plant. There it is, on the right hand side. First, we need to mark the site boundary, then the affluent, influent and entrance points are marked. The design generator will use this information during determining the optimal arrangement of the newly established buildings. There is an automatic algorithm responsible for the optimal arrangement of newly built process units. The outcome of this algorithm can be streamlined by marking some preferred build zones. For instance, by marking the biology area in the map, lets the arranger algorithm know that this part of the site is meant for all biological reactors. After that, the existing biological reactors are marked. Note how identical trains can be marked by copy-pasting. The next step is to mark the secondary clarifiers. We have four circular units, and during the marking, we heavily rely on copy-pasting again. Now let's add a no-build zone. In every project, there are places on the site where we do not want to build anything new. It might be because there are underground assets there, some crazy elevation changes, or just some unmarked functional units. This zone here will stay untouched. Once the site is configured, we turn our attention to the influent characteristics, influent flow, temperature, and composition data. For the sake of simplicity, we use some typical parameters in this quick introduction. These parameters are recommended based on the country and region and can be found in the blue bubbles. The design generator performs various validation tasks as you keep typing in your data to prevent potential data entry mistakes. Specifying effluent limits is the next step. The design generator considers the most frequently used organic matter and nutrition species, and of course the values provided here have a critical impact on the design. In the next screen, process-specific parameters can be optimized. In this case, there are parameters for the primary clarifiers and for the activated sludge stage. Options left empty means the system uses the default values. Once everything is set, we can run our design by a single click. The design results are summarized in a document package. The package elements are listed on the left-hand side, while a quick preview can be seen on the right. Civil, mechanical and process-related information are detailed in 18 documents.
The documents can be downloaded by a single click in both PDF export and editable format. You can also modify the project and rerun it. Your first design is on us. Try the Transcend Design Generator now.